Hello everybody. Um, today we're going to do uh, Florida landscape in acrylics. Uh, just a quick, hopefully quick tutorial. Uh, what I'm doing now is just uh, sketching in um, where uh, I'm going to place some of the objects. Uh, just as, it's just like rough sketch in, you know, and uh, I'm using uh, vine charcoal in order to do this. It's a lot easier than using a pencil because with a pencil it's kind of hard to erase vine charcoal, a lot easier. So uh, save yourself some trouble. You can find them at pretty much any art store. So now I'm trying to figure out where uh, my trees are going to go, my palm trees. Now the sketch in, well at least the palm tree sketch, is not going to stay permanent. Um, it's going to be erased once I'm done with this. So um, now I'm using a number four flat from uh, Liquitex. I'm going to be mixing uh, my dark colors, which is going to be burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of lizarding crimson. Now, a lot of you are having trouble with uh, the darks. I've been asked, how do I make my darks? Well, this is going to be an example. I don't just stay with the same mix all the way. Like I will mix it up a little bit, meaning I will use uh, you know a little bit more ultramarine blue versus the burnt umber and the alizarin crimson, and then I would add yellow to that, and then you know keep adding to that mixture and just mix it up a little bit more and vary, vary the um, the darks. Okay, don't just make it one solid color. So as you can see right here, I added more cadmium yellow deep to the dark mixture so now i'm getting this dark green um, a lot a lot of people have asked well how do i get this dark green well now you know alizarin crimson ultramarine blue and uh cad yellow deep and even a little bit of burnt umber even to make it darker you know, much darker so <clears throat> now i'm just fiddling around a little bit just uh trying to get you know all the whole canvas, you, you, you want to get the whole canvas covered as much as possible. So by then you'll be able to tell what your uh, lightest lights are going to be. Your brightest bright, I'm sorry. What are they going to be and then your darkest darks. So um, that's what I'm doing now. And now I'm basically just glazing over with a little bit lighter color. I'm not using very much white at this point. Okay. Um, so now I'm switching to a number two flat is what I'm using. Just mixing all the colors. Now I'm using a little bit of white into the mixture. Um, the dark green mixture so I'm using ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow deep we're gonna start with um, with some of the bright colors which I really shouldn't be doing at this point but I just wanted to test out some of the colors well, actually I'm sorry the sky color I don't know why I said uh, the green so basically the sky color uh, I use ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre, which I added to my palette, and a little bit of alizarin crimson and a lot of white. Now, as we get towards the base of this, I'm going to add a little bit more alizarin. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to this. I'm using a lot of white, a lot of thick paint. Because the, pr the problem is if you don't put enough paint, it's just going to look very watered down. And uh, once it dry, you'll be able to see the back, uh, the background, the background white of this canvas. And I don't want that. So I'm applying, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm applying heavy paints to this. Now, it may seem a little bit dark right now, which is fine. Remember, you want dark in order to show light. If I did this, you know... Uh, if the value was way lighter than what I have it now, then you would not be able to see a lot of my uh, highlights that I will be putting onto the trees and onto the bush as well. So I'm keeping it dark. So now I'm adding more alizarin crimson and yellow ochre to uh, the sky color. 
So what that's doing is warming up the base of uh, the horizon. And um, also I'm graying it down even more. Okay. So I'm just going to try and get that covered. So remember, you want to just try and cover the whole canvas with your darks and mid-tones if possible and adjust your values as you go because by then you'll sh you should be able to tell oh well you know this is way too dark this is way too light from one object to another here I'm able to blend a little bit because my paints are still a little bit wet because I have to work pretty fast in order to blend and I added a little bit of, um, uh, not sky holes, but I'm just, you know, giving a little bit more shape to the bush. So uh, it doesn't look just stagnant and just like straight lines. Give it a little bit, you know, of sky holes here and there. And we're going to work on that even a little bit more as we progress with this painting. So now I'm trying to figure out how far down I want this uh, horizon sky to go because it's going to be landscape in the background as well. Just mixing up uh, some some of the colors here in order to uh, start working on uh, how should I say I guess the the hillside of this uh, I guess basically a little island really. So what I did I used uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and a tad bit. Of cad yellow I just want to give it like a warm earthy tone with a little bit of green into this so I'm just this is basically like the rough in okay I'm just roughing in the, the colors where approximately they're gonna go because eventually other colors will go on top and which will mix in with the background colors and just bring everything into harmony. I don't paint just like one little detail at a time, then work on the next detail. It's just it, it will drive you nuts, and uh, you'll you'll give up because it's way too many details. So, it's, and the way I paint is very impressionistic, and try to get uh, everything within approximate. Uh, a, a, oh, how should I say that? Within approximate. There you go. So I'm adding just a little bit more <clears throat> darks as we go. Because as it dries, if I see it's the dark is too light and I need more dark, which is the beauty of acrylic, I can mix up more dark and just go on top of it to make it even darker. That's why I say you do not need black on your palette. Uh, black will suck the life out of any painting. Okay. Now in some situations you might want to use black. It depends more the modern contemporary painters might use black. But um, I mean in reality if you want black just mix your primaries. I mean you can mix your alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow deep and then uh, burnt umber. Uh, I mean alizarin crimson, cad yellow deep and ultramarine blue. And you should mix them in an equal proportion you should get a black. So now I'm working on a background um, landscape here. So I made it, you know, the values a little bit darker than what the sky is so you can decipher. So I use ultramarine blue, um, burnt sienna, and a little bit of yellow ochre. And the, the reason why I used the yellow ochre was to give it the green, but like a grayed out green between the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre. It will give you like a really dull green. Okay, and um, I'm adding also a little bit more ultramarine blue to the base of the landscape. Okay, just so I can show distance. So now I'm going to be adding also cerulean blue to uh, my palette. I didn't put it out at the beginning because, you know, I don't need it to dry. If you're not going to use the colors right away, try not to put the colors on your palette. Okay, because they will dry on you. But I have my spritzer that you can see on the left side. So this is uh, 
a round brush that I'm using. It's going to be a number two round brush. Not, not a round brush, I'm sorry, a filbert brush. Filbert. So, <clears throat> I'm mixing in the color for um, the, the bush here. But looks like it's a little bit too to uh it's it's green but on the reddish side a little bit it's not as as popping green as i wanted to so i'm adding thalo blue and i'm going to use thalo blue and cad yellow deep and i'm going to scumble this color in so here you'll see the difference Notice how the color is a little bit brighter. Because oh, you gotta remember, ultramarine blue has a little bit of a red uh, tint or a little red shade to it. So red and green kind of dull each other out. So that's why I use more of the phthalo blue and the cadmium yellow. So it makes it like a, you know, uh, a brighter green. And I'm working a little bit more on the mid-tones right now. It's not the brightest green that I'm using yet. Okay. So now I'm mixing Thalo Blue and Cad Yellow, but a little bit more blue this time. Just to show the base of the bush. So Because you want to give it a round shape. All right. So as we get towards the bottom of the bush, it's going to be a little bit darker and darker. So I'm adding a little bit more Thalo Blue and actually some ultramarine blue i'm varying between the two just to give some variation notice how it's a little bit darker now so as i'm scumbling down um, scumbling this in i'm i'm just varying my stroke i'm scumbling it in and i'm varying the color okay i'm not just sticking to one so now i'm going to use a small round brush this is a number two synthetic uh white bristle because some have asked me about the difference between synthetic and uh, bristle brush I hardly ever use a pure bristle brush on acrylic paintings because then it will show too much of the brush mark and then it will streak the color you're better off using a, a, a white synthetic brush uh, when you're doing acrylics um, white synthetic or a brown Teclon uh, synthetic brush they're pretty good for acrylics and you want like a semi stiff brush and not too hard because then you will take out the under layers as well. So now I'm testing out the colors even a little bit more. I'm trying to add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more white as I go just to give it more definition. And you notice I'm not going into details, you know, leaf by leaf by leaf. I mean, if I if you really want a detailed painting you might as well just take a, a photograph and you'll get as detailed as you want I admire those that just paint like very photorealistic I mean it's a it's a real feat to do that but this is not my point here uh, now I'm just gonna add a little bit of cad yellow um, this is a, a cad yellow light so it's a little bit on the cooler side so like I was saying you you don't want to give too much information in painting you want the viewers brain to do the rest of the work or at least tell the rest of the story fill in the details this is what keeps a painting interesting so but I do admire you know for uh, hyper realism paintings it's pretty cool to watch but it's not really what I'm after so just you know working a little bit more of the bushes varying my greens a little bit because I'm also using cerulean blue and some ultramarine blue and then I'm going with the phthalo blue so I'm going back and forth between all three blues added a little cool blue here a little you know warmer blue there because remember when you look at a bush not everything's just one color there's variation in and any kind of uh, foliage that you look at Now I'm using the ultramarine blue just to warm up a few, few parts of it a little bit more. 
and adding a little bit of darks. So I'm working pretty quick here, just working some of the, so I can mix in a little bit of the color. So I'm using darker blues. Um, and I'm also using a little bit of uh, burnt sienna inside this blue. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue will make a green, but like a dark grayed out green when used together. Sometimes I use as my base color actually, depending on what kind of green I'm looking for, or if I really want a warm undertone. Just fiddling a little bit more. Now I'm adding some of this green into the hillside where the trees are going to be going. But now I'm not going to get too much into detail. Just This is going to be the rough end. Uh, rough end of the greens. There's going to be more colors added to this. I'm just adding mid-tone colors right now. A little bit more yellow to this mixture. Now I'm still working with the cad yellow deep and some parts I did use um, the cad yellow light in order to bring out a brighter green so you can you know tell the difference because I want some cold green warm green because when I'm using with the ultramarine blue, uh, it makes it more of a warm green with the cad yellow deep. So, and uh, if I use the phthalo blue and cad yellow light, then it's going to be like a cooler green. Now I'm working on the water. I'm I'm actually putting in the the base color for um, for the water. Uh, right now it looks a little bit dark. The value is almost the same as the background landscape, but I'm going to be working on that and then um, lighten it up and then you'll be able to decipher between the two Still working in the details here. I'm using pretty much almost pure ultramarine blue for the water. So now I'm adding the sky. So here I'm using the ultramarine blue with a little bit of a yellow ochre and um, a lot of white just to differentiate uh, from the darker colors. And I'm using an old brush, which is, you know, pretty rough uh, bristles on, not, not rough in the sense that it's pretty stiff, but a beat up, pretty much a beat up old brush that I'm using, which is great for clouds. Especially in a, uh, for acrylic, you want to use an old beat up uh, brush for the clouds, because uh, otherwise you should try to use a flat brush. I've tried that before, it just doesn't work out for me. So still the same mixture. I'm actually adding a little bit more cad yellow to the ultramarine blue and white. And uh, I'm going to be using also alizarin crimson as we're going with this with a little bit of white as well. I just wanted to give it that after the shower, you know, sometimes we have these thunderstorms in Florida. And when you look at the sky, you got like a really nice grayed out blue and then like almost white puffy clouds such a nice contrast and I'm trying to portray that but not overwhelmingly overwhelmingly just uh, a little bit just to give an indication you know basically that a storm had just passed and I'm 
going to get like a ray of light coming from after the storm. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, as you notice, I'm not trying to be too detailed about this. It's, it's just a rough, you know, uh, clouds putting a little bit everywhere. And I have to work quick because I'm working with a semi-dry brush to, to, to get the effect of the clouds. And I'm really working really quick so I can somewhat blend in a little bit of the colors. As you see, I'm making lighter, well, I would say lighter greens, but I'm adding more yellow to the phthalo blue okay. and uh, cad yellow light. Just so you can get some light. Uh, I'm trying to portray the sunlight coming from above. Um, sorry for the background noise. Now I'm not using too much water on my brush because then it'll be, it'll be more like a watercolor. You want the paint to be a little bit thick. So it will cover the underlying um, base color. I don't want it the color too transparent. And you would do the same thing if this was oil. You'd use less medium and a lot thicker colors. I'm trying to put a few straggler, <laughs> straggler leaves here and there, just to give it some sense of. Uh, of this bush because not everything I'm sure no landscaper came and just made everything equal and the same so gotta give it some sense of realism Okay, now I'm actually adding some of the green here, uh, adding lighter tones to this little uh, ridge or I guess this little hill, if you will. Okay, now remember the ultramarine blue? I was using pure blue, ultramarine blue. Uh, initially when I put the base of this uh, of this lagoon so now I'm actually using the ultramarine blue with a lot more white okay so now you can differentiate between the back landscape and the and the lagoon now I'm just poking dots here and there just to show like the the hill is just a little bit higher in elevation than uh, in the water. I always like to add water to my landscape, especially the Florida landscape. All these little back backwoods, you know, all have rivers. So now I'm back to the filbert brush, uh, a number two. Okay, just adding a little bit more color here. Bringing out some of these darks. Making a little I have more lights. Bringing those darks out of the shadows. Just give hints. You don't have to be too detailed about it. And just, you know, I'm just putting a little river bank under the trees as well.
and I'm just adding a little bit of dark where it's needed and by how do I make the dark is I would probably add a little bit of uh, burnt umber to um, with burnt sienna maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue and sometimes I'll add a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson to warm up the colors a little bit more I mean the burnt sienna is a warm color enough but it depends on how dark I want the colors to be Sorry for the background noise. Somebody's pretty giddy. I'm adding a little bit of branches so as to not make this um, bush like very monolithic, uh, you know. Sometimes you have by the water these, uh, hush, the, the mangroves. So I'm just adding little branches here just to express, oh look, you know, we have a little bit of a tree here, here and there. Just nothing too detailed, just to catch your eye a little bit, just to express that hey this is a you know like a like a tree bush, I guess you would say. And I'm adding some highlights on the, the water from the sky. I'm using a little bit of ultramarine blue and yellow ochre almost to mimic the sky because from the angle at which I'm looking at, I just want this little streak of reflection of the sky coming through. Just so that you won't have just this dark green at the base, you know, to represent the, the trees. I just want to separate um, just this one monotone color. Just to describe that, hey, this is water. And I'm going to be also adding a little bit lighter greens through those streaks. Just to express, you know, the, um, the highlights on the trees as well. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out where this first palm is going to go. And now I remember the drawing where it was approximately, so. Same dark mix as I use all the time, just varying the colors a little bit. Burnt umber, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue. And I'm adding actually a dab of yellow into it, just to start off like a dark, dark green. And some parts are, you know, a little bit more reddish than green, and some parts are a little bit more yellow, uh, yellowish gold and you know brown just that's what i mean by varying your your tone so not everything's the same color because i mean if you look at a, at a tree and you look at the shadow not all the shadows are the same color i mean some parts are a little bit warmer than others some of the shadows are a little bit cooler so Working on dark palm fronds. <clears throat> palm fronds, I'm sorry. This is the part that's slightly tedious trying to get the tree right. Especially with an acrylics, because if if you mess up an acrylics, then you have to try and rematch the color, and it's just like, ugh. If this were an oil, I wouldn't worry too much. Give that a little bend, add a little bit more water so it slides a little bit easier, and put back the same dark colors I used into the tree. Use it into the trunk as well, because we're going to lighten the trunk. But I just need a dark color in order to show the light color, and you will see when as we progress with this.
I hope now you you are understanding um, what I mean by you know how I mix the darks and to vary the darks because I've had a lot of questions about that and uh, now you see that I've explained the difference between synthetic and the bristle brush and you want to use synthetic brush mainly with acrylics unless you're painting like really thick paintings and you want to paint like oils then I recommend it and, an or and another thing if you want to use transitioning from oils to to uh, acrylics I would suggest um, golden open acrylics they're actually pretty good they feel like oils and they dry very very slowly I mean slow enough for anybody that's transitioning it won't set up too quickly on you and they feel just like oil when you're laying down the paint and you can actually use a bristle brush with that and uh, and almost have the same feel and it's great for hot weather uh, if you live like you know like me in Florida in hot humid weather you could actually take these golden open acrylics and put them on your palette and they will stay wet without even misting for at least two to three hours without even drying up on you or even setting up on you I've had some that stayed wet for like a really long time on my palette it's like three days later and, and the paint's still workable and they, they have also an unlocking formula that, that you can use with it but here I'm using a mixture of you know golden acrylics uh, Liquitex and uh, some Winsor & Newton so now I'm adding the second tree, doing a rough in. I don't want it at the same height as the first tree. I just want to give it some variation so that you know your eyes can wander a little bit more throughout the painting. Now you want to vary the shape of the trees. Now, not every tree looks the same, so the fronds are going all over the place here. I'm just being a little bit finicky on this on this part, just uh, adding more fronds here and there. And I'm still using the same darks, just varying it, varying the darks a little bit on each one. If I wanted to make this this last front that I'm painting right now um, further away then I would have added a lot more blue and maybe a, a dab of white to make it look like the trees a little bit further back than the first two but I want to put them all three within the same line and I'm going to be adding sky holes so then just not going to be one solid shape which is what I'm doing right now You don't have to be exact. Just think about you know where you want sun to sh or not the sun, but more like uh, the background colors to show through, or should I say the sky colors to show through? And remember, like I've said in other videos, your sky holes have to be one uh, shade darker, or should I say one value darker than your background sky because uh, you're putting it over dark colors, so it will trick your brain to thinking that the colors are actually a lot lighter so to compensate for that you have to make it a little bit darker than your background color like I said one shade darker see that that was too dark so I'm gonna lighten up a little bit more so I'm just giving the edges a little bit more detail as far as palm fronds that you know it's not one one big front and then we'll be working on highlights over this so it's not going to look, you know, uh, kind of crazy. It's like, wow, this palm frond needs a haircut. <laughs> Same color mixture.
Now I'm adding mid-tone colors, adding cad yellow and ultramarine blue, but more on the yellow side. And I'm varying the greens as well. I want to let some of this background dark show through so you get like a sense of depth uh, that you could almost like see through the tree. As you notice, I'm not doing every palm frond, you know, giving it a highlight just sparsely here and there is what's going to give it that feel of, you know, oh, I can see through the depth of field with, uh, or I should I say, you can see depth. Now I'm adding a little bit of um, a little bit of alizarin crimson to the yellow as well, just to give the bottom leaves a little bit of orange, the, the tips a little bit of orange uh, color, because you got some green, some yellow, some more orange uh, to those trees. They're not always green. Now I'm just defining the edges of this tree. It's important to define the edges. It's, it's what's going to give you the sense of realism. I will be varying my stroke in the direction of the of the fronds, as you will see. I'm just um, giving more definition to the tree as far as the fronds go, adding a little bit more here and there where I didn't put darks. Now I'm adding the lights. So you can see from the first tree that the sense of depth because you have the dark and then the light and it's kind of sparse so you're able to almost like see through the tree and I'm doing the same for the rest for the other two I'm putting just light pressure just quick swift strokes you don't want to add too much pressure to this otherwise you're gonna have one big fat line so I'm almost using the edge of the brush to uh, the very fine edge what's nice with these little synthetic brushes is like when you press on your paint you could almost get like a sharp edge with them and that's why I use in order to make the fronds as you can see the whole painting is coming to light now remember everything was like really dark it looked pretty somber even my uh, highlights were looked like they were somber but now when you see everything in perspective after adding all the highlights now you really get a sense of um, of uh, the perspective and then the, how should I say, uh, the, the values, the different values of the whole painting from the light to the dark and how I use the dark background in order to show the light foreground of these uh, trees and, and the bushes. Now had the background been lighter, these palm fronds highlight would not have shown up as well because they would be almost close to the same value as as um, as each other between the fronds and the sky so I had to make one darker one's got to be lighter a simple rule Now just fiddling around, adding more details here and there where I see fit.
here's my lightest lights coming on now Same thing with this tree, adding on my lightest lights, and I'm going to do the same thing for the next one as well. Just defining a little bit more highlights on the edge of this tree as well. So you can almost see where the light is coming from, from above, after the storm. And that's another reason why I gray down the, the sky, so that when you add a little bit of pure color, like I said in previous video, it, it will just pop for you. Because if this was pure ultramarine blue and white, it would not have popped as, as much um, if I did this. So that's why you kind of have to gray it down. A little bit more yellow, bring down the fronts a little bit more. Now I'm going to try to work on the highlights on the trunks of the trees as well. Just adding a few more dabs here that I just noticed on the fronts and a little bit more thalo blue and cad yellow light in order to make this bright green just to break away from a lot of this yellow cool the tree down a little bit more Okay, so here I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna yellow ochre, used doing the mid tones on the tree. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two. Just where I think, you know, you got to look to see where the light would be hitting. So. And as I go, I'll add lighter and lighter colors to this. More yellowish. Which it would be the same mixture of burnt sienna and yellow, but adding more white to it. And then eventually I would just use a little bit of alizarin crimson to change the shade a little bit. Excuse me. Hope nobody heard that. Okay, now I'm using a little bit of ultramarine blue and um, cerulean blue at the top of the trunk because it's going to be in, in shadow. So I want to cool the shadow a little bit and then the, the back end of the trunk at the base also as well. Like uh, at the base I'll probably make it more like, you know, a bluish purple. At the top more of a ultramarine blue. A little bit of white and a little hint of burnt sienna 
just to show the color through just to show that you know there is shadows and it'll accentuate the highlights even a little bit more As you can see, I'm going lighter and lighter, adding more and more white as we go. I'm just defining the little edge of the trunk a little bit more. Same for this puppy. Yeah, wow, you see that, how that's coming out lit now? You could uh, really see how the trunk's being defined now. You'll see a lot better definition of the colors once I take a picture of this when it's done and you'll be able to see it in a little bit more detail. adding a, a more alizarin crimson so varying the as we get towards the lower part of the tree uh, the color is not as uh, I should I say cool it's, it's going to be a little bit darker so if I'm going yellow at the top as I get towards the bottom further away from the sun I'm going to give it more warmth get, make it a little bit more red This one is not in so much sunlight, so just towards the bottom of the tree, I'm adding these colors. The highlight towards the top, I'm leaving it alone. Now I'm just adding more branches to the back of this tree, of this bush here. I'm using ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, a lot of white, and a little bit of burnt sienna to gray down the purple. more branches now making some of the highlights on this hill I'm using burnt sienna, white, and a um, little bit more yellow ochre. Give some definitions to the banks. And actually, I did use a little bit of alizarin crimson too. Forgot to say that. I had some of the mixture already on the palette. Just to add some visual interest to the hill. And a little bit more to the bushes too. That's basically so it will draw your eye to the base of the trees as well. Now just my little egret. I use pretty much use... Uh, 
pure white, slightly diluted with the water, so you can see some of the some of the green in the back will come through. Well, not so much, but I didn't want to make a stark white, so just like a th uh, I didn't I didn't put a heavy coat on my brush. Put it that way. What would Florida be without any grit? Give a little bit of uh, the reflection in the water. Finding the head a little bit here. I'm gonna put a couple more, but this time I'm gonna put some ibis to go along with the egret, not just to keep him alone here. Have some company. Usually I would draw them out in pastel before doing this, um, but at this point I really didn't need since they're gonna be very small, not very um, detailed. Instead of using my pest my pastel white pencil, I just painted you know directly with the brush. It was just a lot quicker. Almost uh, like the one stroke technique. I think everybody remembered that, the one stroke technique with Donna Dewberry. There we go. We're pretty much almost done with this. Um, just add a little bit of highlight. And I'm gonna add a little bit of ultramarine blue with a lot of white just to give a little bit of cool shadow under the egret and then a little bit on the back of the ibis as well. Just to show that's under the tree, it's in, in, inside shadow. go a little bit of blue the same at the belly there you go just like that just to give a little bit of contrast between light and dark well I thank you all for watching catch you on the next video have a good night